So today, as our first topic, I've decided just to talk about stems. Those lines that go up or down and are attached to the note heads. And I'm going to talk about what the appropriate length of a stem is and what direction you are supposed to be choosing when you write a stem. First, we're going to talk about the length of a stem or stem length. Now, the general rule is that stems are always supposed to be one octave long. Okay, this is what we all do and it helps the eyes see what we're doing. Let's start with this note head that is on an A in the treble clef. Now, because the note head is below the middle line, in this case, it's the B line, the stem will be pointing up. Now, when I'm writing my stem, I have to see, it's easier if you can read music and do this. So I know the next A, an octave up, is actually here on a ledger line above the staff. So I need to eyeball it and make sure that my stem goes all the way up to that A. And it would be great if you could use a ruler. There. So the note head was on A, the stem is one octave long and it ends where the next A would be on a line. Now I have a note head on this F. The stem has to go up because it's underneath the center line and it should end, it should touch uh, one octave up. The next F is this top line of the treble clef, so I'm gonna draw a line all the way from this note head to the top there using my ruler. It's hard because I'm using marker. Okay, now this is a D. It is above the center line, so the stem has to go down all the way to where the next D would be underneath, which is right sitting underneath the bottom line of the treble clef. So I take my ruler, I line it up. I start with my marker touching the corner of the note head. If I start too far, there will be a space. So my ruler is touching the side of the note head, which makes my the felt of my marker or your pencil touch the note head and I drag it down all the way to D. Now I went to where the middle of a D note head would be if there was a D there. I didn't stop above it because then it would look like I only went to E and that would be an octave length of a seventh. That's wrong. So I started on this D line and I went right down to the middle of what should be the next space where D sits, even though it's not really a space because it's underneath the treble clef. Now here's a high F. This note head is actually a little bit small. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, which is very difficult with markers. I made it uglier. Oh well, I'm going to draw a stem going down because again, this F is sitting above the center line. So I'm gonna set up my ruler and I'm gonna start with my marker just touching the end of the note head. And in this case, F is on this space, so I want to drag my, my uh, marker down to the middle of this space so it looks like it's hitting the center of where the F note head would be if it was written down there. There we go. That's quite strange. As if my life isn't hard enough, the marker's magically creating white space. And here's a C. Now again, this note head is above the center line. So I will be drawing a stem going down. And in this case, the next C would be middle C down here. Now I can't really write anything. So I have to eyeball it. I have to imagine where middle C would be. It's gonna be probably about here. I can use this D stem as reference. Whatever I do, this stem has to be lower than that D stem has to be. So I'll set up my ruler. I'm touching my marker just to the end of the note head and I'm going to draw it down to where I think middle C should be. And I think I did a good job because as a reference from the D stem, it is lower. So the eye can see. You don't even have to look at the note head. The, your eye can tell that this note is lower than this note just because of the stem length. And again, here's a low D. The stem is going to be pointing upwards because the note head is sitting below the center line 
and I'm going to use my ruler and draw an octave up. And in this case, I'm going to land right on this uh, D line up here in the treble clef, so that's easy. I'll touch my ruler a little bit inwards, and then my felt gets pressed right to the corner of the note head, and I go up, and then I stop, and there it is. Every one of those stems is one octave long. Now that we know that a stem is always an octave long, I want to reiterate how stem direction works. How do we know whether the stem of this note is going to go up or how do we know it's going to go down? The note heads that sit underneath the center line of any staff, the, note, the stems always go up. And the notes that sit above the center line of any staff, the stems go down. Okay, it doesn't matter whether we're in the treble clef or the bass clef or the alto clef or the tenor clef. We use the center line. So in this case, it's the B line, but a more appropriate term might be center line. So for example, this D and this A. I know an, a stem is supposed to be one octave long. Because these note heads sit underneath the B line or the center line, both stems go up one octave, all the way up to the next D and all the way up to the, where the next A would be. These two notes, C and F, their stems go down because the note heads sit above the center line. So this is a C one octave stem down to middle C, and this is an F one octave stem down to the F space underneath it. Now, what about this thing? Here's a B, and it's actually sitting on the center line. So does the stem go up, or does the stem go down? Now, in a later video, I'm going to make a I'm going to talk about beaming. If this was an eighth note and there were other notes that you had to attach to it, the rules would change. But for now, I'm just talking about this specific B quarter note all by itself. Does the stem go up or the stem go down? Most textbooks will say that it's your choice, that you get to choose whether the stem goes up or whether the stem goes down. There are some textbooks that say it depends on the music surrounding it. So if this B is surrounded by down stems, then you should put it down. Or if this B is surrounded by music with up stems, you should put it up. I, myself, me, Andrew, the guy making this video, am telling you that's not correct. Notes, individual notes on the center line, please put their stem facing down. That's the rule. Okay, that was the original rule. Over time, it's become relaxed and people have said you can put it up or down, it's up to you. But I was taught to put the stem down when it's in an individual note on, on the center line. And quite frankly, I had amazing teachers and I trust them. And that's what I'm telling you to do. Do not put the stem up for an individual note on the center line. Stems go down one octave. Down here is where the B would approximately be underneath middle C. The stem is one octave. It's pointing down. Notes on center lines go down. Note heads above the center line also go down. And note heads below the center line, their stems go up. Now, a few moments ago, we learned that stem lengths are supposed to be one octave long, but they're are a couple of exceptions to that rule, one of which I'm going to show you now, and that's concerning notes on ledger lines. Here's the rule. If a note head is on, a ledger, on one or more ledger lines above the staff, the one octave stem length rule no longer applies. What you have to do is you have to draw a stem from the note head all the way to the center line. Okay, so let's do that now. This is an F. Now, because it's more than two ledger lines, because there are more than two ledger lines present, 
we have to take our ruler and start at the corner of this note head and drag it all the way down to the D center line in the bass clef. If you use the old rule that you only have to go one octave, you would end up here. But we're going to take our ruler and drag it all the way down to D. This is important because if a note appears really high above the staff, it becomes really difficult to read. And if you end the stem too early, it can be really stressful for the musician and it can strain their eyes and stuff like that. Let's do the next one. This is a G below the bass clef. Now, even though you might think a stem length is one octave long, so the stem is gonna end on that G, again, Pretend maybe this is an actual piano piece and you have to read that note, then you have to read that note. If the stem length ends here, your eye gets stressed out moving from that far to that far. It's much easier to see the shape if we take the stem length and put it all the way up to D. It's easier for the musician to read. So that looks like a really long stem. It's actually correct. It probably, it might look weird to you, but you've played this before if you're a musician, you just didn't notice. So because this is a video where we're focusing on stem length, you might say, no, that can't be right. But really it is. Go check in your music. When you have a note that's more, and more than a couple ledger lines are there, the stem length goes to the middle. Now here's an E, I wrote it here on purpose because it doesn't follow the rule. Even though it is on a ledger line, because there's only one ledger line, we go back to just writing an octave length stem. So in this case, it would go up to E in the bass clef, right to the middle of the staff, or to the middle of that space. So these had multiple ledger lines, so the stem got extended to the center line. This only had one ledger line, so the stem remained one octave. Now here's a really high G. There's more than one ledger line present. Therefore, we have to take our ruler and drag our stem all the way down to the center line. And there you have it. So there's an exception to our one octave stem length rule. Now there's one other exception to the stem length rule and that has to do with writing in two parts on one staff. And this is something you're going to have to do in level nine harmony, level 10 harmony and ARCT harmony. Uh, but also if you are in level eight and you end up writing chorale style cadences on your, on your RCM exam. Now, if this, what I'm about to tell you might freak you out because it's really, really detailed. I'll be honest, when I'm writing harmony exercises, I don't always use this rule, but because I'm making a video on stem lengths, I want it to be really, really specific in case you want to be extraordinarily neat. So of all the things I've shown you in this video, this is the least important, but you still might find it interesting to learn and, uh, you know, Perhaps you wanna be really, really, really smart and go ahead and do this. So here's what happens. In two-part writing, depending on where the note head is, the stem lengths change. They're actually shorter than one octave. They're shorter than they would normally be depending where they are in the staff. I'm gonna talk about the alto line first. If you have a note head in the alto part, and it is on the center line or above, the stem length is an octave. Now in the alto part, if the note head sits on uh, the second lowest space, the stem length actually gets shortened to a seventh, as well as the line right underneath. And if the alto note head sits on the bottom space of the stave, the stem length actually gets shortened to a sixth. Now, if you use a notation software like Finale or Sibelius, it usually does this 
for you. I use Finale and Finale usually takes care of this, although sometimes it actually gets really screwed up. I'll write exercises where uh, the, the program successfully does this and then I'll close the application and open it up again and write a different one and it doesn't get it. I'm not entirely sure why, but whatever. So it's actually important uh, to know this. So let's start with this A. Now it's sitting really low. So in this case, we have, it has to be the interval of a six. So what's a six under F? That would be A. So we have to take our rulers and instead of drawing an octave length stem, we have to imagine where the A would be underneath. Underneath middle C would be there, A would be probably there. So our stem length is gonna be about there. So that's short. It's also facing down, obviously. I'm not gonna have, I don't need to explain that. You should know by now. If we were writing in two parts, the stem goes down. But that is quite short. It's not an octave length. Here's the same thing. Goes down probably to an A. It's really important that those stems are the exact same length, otherwise your musician's eye will get a little freaked out. And once again, this is below the lowest space, so it's gonna be a sixth. So a six below E, what is that? Uh, G, I guess, so it has to be a little bit longer than that F stem. I think that's okay. Maybe a touch longer. And then there's the F stem going down a six to A again. And one more. Okay, so just by looking at the stems, forget about the note head, just looking at the stems, your eye will be able to see that these stems must be attached to the same note because they're the same height, and this stem must be coming from a note that is a little lower because it's sitting underneath. So it's pleasing to the eye. Now let's look at the soprano. Now the soprano, of course, is the mirror image of this little thing over here. So for the soprano, if it's on the center line or below, then it gets an octave stem. If it's on the second highest line, it gets a seventh. And if it's on the, I said line, I meant space. If it's on the second highest space, it gets a seventh. And if it's on the highest space, it gets a sixth. Now let's write our soprano stems. The first note is an A, and it is on or below the center line of the staff. So it goes to its normal rule and gets an octave length stem. So I place my ruler at the corner of the note head, and I imagine where the next A would be, transposing up an octave, and I write my stem all the way up there. Now we have two Bs, and again they are on the center line, so they get an octave length stem and it's critical that the stem comes out higher than that A stem. So I'm gonna imagine that A ledger line and then go a little higher. I think that's good, and now this stem has to be the exact same length. Is it the same length? Barely. Here's A again, I can just copy this. It has to be one octave up. This note head is really hideous. Okay. It's January 2022, if you're wondering, and there's a pandemic on, and I have nothing to do, if that's what you're thinking. And there's truck drivers outside the parliament. Okay, so there's a D here. Now, this is on a line. The space over here is a seventh. This um, third highest space is a seventh. So 
So we are going to go ahead and draw a seventh. This note head is on uh, the D line. And in this case, I'm going to use the length of a seventh. Now, if you're wondering why didn't you choose the length of a sixth, the answer is, technically speaking, because it's on a line, it should be exactly in between a six and a seventh. And that's what your computer program should do, but uh, that's a little, you know, that's a little extreme because I'm on a whiteboard with marker here. So I'm just gonna go up a seventh. And a seventh above D would be C, so there's be the A ledger line would be here, and then the C ledger line would be probably over there. And that's probably the length of a seventh. And it is higher than the other note, so it looks good. Okay, so that's, a, that's one of the most detailed and crazy uh, pedantic videos I've ever made, but I guess it's important that we know. So in this video, you learn that stem lengths are supposed to be an octave long. You learn that if a note is above the middle line or on the middle line, it goes down. And if a note is below the middle line, the stem goes up. You learned that if a note head is on more than, if a note head is on ledger lines and there are more than one ledger line present, that the stem gets extended all the way to the center line. And now here, you've learned about two part writing and how as the note heads get farther away from the middle line, the stems actually shrink. And this makes it easier for the musician to read. Everything we learned today is all to help the eye of the musician sight read effectively and not get stressed out. That includes your RCM examiner, who needs to read your music effectively and give you high marks on your exam.